right, guys, we have Mr. Kevin Hensley. Yes, sir. Right here. I'm so excited to do this because we've had a lot of folks that um, have been like engine or whole car builders or whatever, but we've never had anybody that's going to give us the probably the knowledge that you have of <laughs> transmissions yeah. because everybody knows uh, there's only magic inside automatic transmissions. Now, there's a lot of it in there. <laughs> some some is put there from the factory and some you got to build yourself. <laughs> right. I can't imagine the, um, you know, we've, we've looked inside a Turbo 350 or 700R in the past, you know, and I, I don't know how you keep it all together. That's what blows my mind. I don't know. It's just one of those deals. You just do so many of them. You learn where everything goes. And... Right. So we're we're here in the shop. Yes, sir. Uh, so folks will kind of hear some folks coming in and out and yeah. things like that in the Busy background. Place. And probably see them on the YouTube video if they're watching it for sure. Um, the the background here for everybody that's listening let's explain to them kind of what what is back here like across this back wall is nothing but like clutches and stuff right i mean i don't even <laughs> well, know what all that stuff originally is. when i started out i kind of picks up on wanted to designate build areas for different model transmissions gotcha and so my first area that's a 24 foot bench and it's in four six foot benches so i started out with what i do the most of which mm -hmm. is 4L60s. So I made that first little deal, 4L60s, and then I got thinking, I'm like, well, you know, Turbo 350s and Glides, they're kind of got a lot of the same tooling and stuff. So I set up the first area for 4L60s, Glides, 350s, mm. and then my second one is 400s and 80s, and that's all stuff that goes in 400s and 80s, you know, heavy duty snap rings, different clutch plates. Um, my next one, I don't know how I'll ever use it anymore. That's my Ford area. And believe it or not, Ford is very interchangeable. Yeah. You know, a lot of the 400s actually use Ford clutches. Oh, wow. That's kind of neat. Yeah. So if you do like a, a Pro Mod drum. I can grab one. All right. He's walking over to grab the grab this drum here. Uh, for everybody listening, everybody that's watching can obviously see. So this is a Pro Mod drum with a 36 element sprag. And this is actually a Ford clutch. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. And that's, so that's my Ford area. Mm -hmm. And then the next one over is my Dodge area, which as you can see, I've been buying a lot of inventory this summer and all my inventory is just on that bench. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't put it all up. Make sure it's ready. <clears throat> now, when you say Dodge, like are you talking gas Dodge or diesel Dodge? Uh, both. <clears throat> that's yep. just my Dodge area. It's that's got awesome. everything from your front wheel drives to your gas burners, to yep. your big diesel builds. I've got, I've got just extra clutch plates because I do use the lathe over there and I machine a lot of parts and add clutches. Oh. So I need to have extra clutches in, on yeah. stock, in stock. That's pretty cool. Now yeah. what, uh, yeah, okay, we're getting too far ahead. All right. We're getting too far ahead. So let's start. <laughs> what is, uh, the, for everybody that doesn't know internal transmission and the magic they have, uh -huh. what is like the uh, highest horsepower car you that has one of your transmissions in it? Well, or, high, or fastest. I mean, we may not be able to give the... I don't know that I can... That Chris wants me telling everybody what mm -hmm. kind of power his car makes. Yep. But I know his car has been low 460s. God, that's so fast. So, I mean, anybody that that's can do so math fast. can kind of figure it out. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, Chris and Chris Johnson. Chris Harper. And, yep. Yep. And I uh, built... Uh, Chris's trans was actually built by another shop, and mm -hmm. it had some difficulties, and they had some personality conflicts. <laughs> and so I ended up fixing Chris's trans. That's awesome. And he's been an awesome customer. Yep. You know, every time he pulls the motor out, he just brings me a trans and says, here, check it out. That's and cool. we've, we've had, we've caught some, some failures that were going to happen, you know, before they actually right. happened in the upgraded parts. Well, and the benefit to that too, is like for him, you guys, I mean, he probably drives by here on his way home. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've had Chris and Jonathan both on the podcast. And like the level of cars that those guys are at, I mean, you have to yeah. like just having you look at the trans is part of maintenance yep. at that level. You know, it's not yep. like a street car that makes 800 horsepower. I mean, it's like yep. a, you know, yeah, the, purpose the last built time car. we had his trans apart, we actually figured out that the car had a cooler problem. Wow. And we caught it and fixed it before it caused a bad failure. That's crazy to me. Yeah. And then, you know, the level of like, you're being able to see that that's what's happening and, mm -hmm. and know that that kind of stuff. So we're definitely going to get into that because the, but I want to back up. I want to talk about you as a kid, like you okay. as like a, I feel like 10, 11, 12 year old for guys anyways, is about when we kind of start pivoting towards car stuff, right? Yep. So 11 year old Kevin, what's he like? Is he a car guy? <laughs> yeah. I was kind of 
pushed into it. Okay. We're talking about my dad, so <laughs> I'm probably going to probably going to tear up. Gotcha. No worries. Um, my dad, my dad did dirt track. Yeah. And so every day after school, that's where I was. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And so when I got out of when I got out of that, when I moved out of the house, I didn't want cars. I hated it because that was my life. <laughs> Is that I come what home you did? School, yep. I changed clothes, and I caught myself laying in the driveway where at my where I moved out on my own, underneath <laughs> the truck, underneath my truck. And I'm like, this is me. I can't get away from this. Yep. Yep. That happens to the best of us, I tell you. So you're obviously you're you're helping turn wrenches, you're working on dirt track stuff, which is yeah. Um if if people listening have never really followed much dirt track stuff, those guys, I mean, it's that car's ragged edge. Oh yeah. The entire time it's racing. Like yes. it's it's high RPM. Yep. and all that kind of stuff so um a lot of those guys and there's not big money in that so you're working on it you're wrenching it yourself yep. you know so obviously doing that so you move out yeah um, i move out i wanted away from cars i hated it because <laughs> yep. that was my life every day after school you know you go home you change clothes and dad's like let's work on a race car <laughs> okay and i was just sick of it yep yep but you know you spend about a year or two on your own and the shit dad put in you is still there no yeah for sure so being around those kind of race cars, um, like what did you learn to drive in? Was I mean, like obviously there's a car around all the time. Yep. So I mean, um, at about 13 years old, my mom started to let me drive the dirt roads. Yeah. And dad had a, my dad had a '74 Mustang too, <laughs> and that was just his commuter car. And so wow. that's what I learned to drive in. It was a, a four speed car, and I remember there was something weird about you had to do something with a shifter to get it in reverse, like pick it up and go over or push it down. It was something weird, but I learned to drive in a stick. That's cool. So yeah. you've gotten away from that a little bit. Uh, you you do some manual trans rebuilds here, yeah. but like you're you're definitely known for automatic stuff. I yeah, uh, I won't even buy a vehicle with Scott Standard in. Yeah, it's too hard. I'm, well, I'm 100 percent auto. Well, guy. the other side of that too is like as busy as you are, which we're going to talk about in a little bit too. It's hard for you to answer calls, answer emails, Very, drive, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. It's been a battle shift, this summer. Yeah, shift, transmission, stuff. So yeah. uh, but so you learn to drive in a, in a Mustang II super full car. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, but what was your first car? What, what did you have My as your first, first one? car. Okay, this, there's a little story to this one. Oh, yeah. I was, well, let's see, how old was I? I guess I was just turned 15. And in our, our weekly routine, every weekend, Dad wake me up and we go to grandma's, which was across the field. Yep. You know, drive around the corner, go to grandma's, we'd eat breakfast. <laughs> and so normal Saturday morning, dad yep. wakes me up. Come on, boy, let's go. We're going to go eat breakfast. Yep. Like, okay. So on the way to grandma's, he said, we're going to go get you a truck today. You're like, okay. okay. I like so this. So I didn't say a whole lot during breakfast. I just <laughs> was patient. Yep. And we pull out of grandma's house and start heading. We live in Oak. We lived in Oaks at the time. Cool. Start heading towards Twin Oaks. We get to Twin Oaks and we turn left. Where in the world are we going? We pull up to Martin Salvage. Oh, yeah. There he you says, go. there you go. Pick what you want. You got a year to make it run. <laughs> oh, man, that's cool. And so we looked at a lot of trucks, and uh, my dad was a Ford guy. Okay. And we found a 68 Ford pickup. Ooh, I like yep, it. Yep, had a blown 429 in it. Mm -hmm. And at that time, dad was getting out of dirt tracking. And so he said, I got, I got a motor for you. I'll detune my circle track motor. Oh, that's and cool. And we'll put it in there. And so, so did he run... Ford Motor Circle yeah, Track? he was a 351 wow. Cleveland guy. That's cool. So you had something pretty hot then. Like, I had a decent running truck. Yeah. I mean, it was the head. He had used his race car heads, which we all know that doesn't work out when you start doing something street. <laughs> start driving every day. But in it, yeah. the truck ran pretty decent. That's cool. So I was raised in a hot rod. That's awesome. That's awesome. So what was your, like, um, what was your first job to pay for gas and parts? Oh, my first job. First job was at a convenience store in Little Kansas. Yeah? Yep. Oh, worked, that's awesome. I worked e evenings and weekends there. Yeah. Man. Didn't, didn't have much of a personal life. <laughs> no, no. Cars all day. Yeah. <laughs> School, cars all day, and then working yep. at the, the one stop in Kansas yep. probably right there that's on the corner. That's what it was. That's awesome. I believe that's it was called awesome. Lowe's back then. That's funny. So before you had your own shop, which mm -hmm. were, if people are watching the video, They'll see uh, all of that leading up. We'll do some panning shots of the shop and stuff like that. What'd you do before you had your own shop? Well, I went to college. And college didn't really work out for me. I just I, I had enough of school. Yep. Uh, 
came back home. I knew I wanted to do something. Didn't know what it was. Yep. Went to kind of like everybody else. Went to the chicken plant. I needed a job. Yep. I worked there for several several years trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I ended up at Web Wheel for some reason. Cool. Okay. Yep. I went to Web Wheel. I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life at that point. Mm-hmm. Started at Web Wheel as a painter. I painted the brake drums. Oh, that's neat. And I just kept working my way up. Within three years, I was doing setups and maintenance on them. So that's I had, cool. I had a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, this ain't enough. Actually, it wasn't that. I just, <laughs> I was, I was at my wife's aunt's in Tulsa. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a city person, so I was bored. And she worked at Tulsa Technology Center. Gotcha. And so I picked up a pamphlet and I was reading it and I saw automatic transmission course. I thought, oh. this looks interesting. I mean, I had bad experience yeah. when I was young with transmission rebuilder. I can only And imagine. so I didn't want to be the victim yeah. again. So I thought, I'll just build my own. And I enrolled in the course. That's awesome. So when was that? That was probably late 2000. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So now let's get into the story of the the uh, that place there. What was the name of it again? Sorry. Tulsa Technology Center. There you go. Um, give us the story you were telling me just before I started recording. <laughs> so in the pamphlet, it said, uh, don't bring a transmission. We have cores provided. And so my first... <laughs> evening it was a it was a 40 hour course four hours i believe it was like tuesday night or something for 10 weeks oh, i showed wow. up first night we watched a video for about two hours on turbo 350s and the teacher steve cummings he was my teacher so i'm sure he'll watch this video at some point <laughs> uh he said uh, you got a trans bring it and so i had a mustang that had a bad c4 in it so went home spent all week pulling the tranny out and took it to class that's awesome so you're in there it, obviously most everybody probably had like turbo 350s, turbo 400s, all that kind of stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. So, are you one of the only Ford guys, or one of the guys to bring a Ford tranny in? I believe I was the only Ford transmission. Yes. <laughs> so they're like, perfect. We're going to make an example yep. of you, and you, you got your own yep. table over and, here. Uh, yeah. When it dropped, when I dropped the trans off, Steve, he built me, he or he showed me a table. He said, "There you go. Take it apart." <laughs> And I was just looking at this thing. What in the world am I going to do with this? Yeah. I don't know how to take this thing apart. <laughs> and you've watched a two-hour video on Turbo 350s. <laughs> it wasn't even on disassembly. It was actually on theory. <laughs> oh, geez. That's crazy. So you get it rebuilt. So yep. you were um, you were telling me you were one of the last people to get parts. Yep. So, so everybody's probably tearing it apart the same amount of time. Pretty yep. much. But you're one of the last guys to get parts. But you were also one of the first guys to finish putting it back yep. together. I was the last person to get all my parts to be able to finish the to be able to start building it. And I was the second person to put it across the transmission dyno and mine actually worked. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's crazy. And so at that moment, I'm sure you, like you obviously had a mechanical brain at that point, because like all the stuff you had done when you were little, so or younger, not little, but younger. And so now you've brought that into this and it's like, I, I get how this works. And then it just is a snowball from there for- I had no desire to build transmissions for a living. <laughs> <laughs> that that was something I did for me. Yeah. You know, I wanted to build my own. Yep. And I lived in a small town. I told you guys I lived in Oaks. Mm-hmm. And I come home one day and there's a Turbo 350 on my porch. I'm like, what in the world is this? <laughs> and later that day, a friend, family friend showed up and his name was Cecil. Yeah. He said, uh, heard you was learning how to build automatic transmissions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am. And I was probably halfway through the course. Yeah. He said, well. I dropped one off this morning. Just let me know when it's ready. Oh my gosh. And that was it. And they just started showing up. That's cool. And I, and so I started doing it on the side. Yeah. So and it just snowballed into that. So that was my next question was, did it start as a side business? It did. It started as a side business. Um, I was in the, the basement of my house, had a full garage underneath the house. Wow. And so I was doing it down there and my wife decided that since I was investing so much in tools that it was time to insure them. Yeah. Makes sense. And so when I went to insure them, the insurance company started asking questions and they told me I couldn't have a business in my home. <laughs> so they gave me, I believe, 30 days to vacate the business from my home. Oh my gosh. And so I rented a shop in Little Kansas. <laughs> yeah. And I was there for a couple of years doing it part time. Wow. And then we decided it was time to to step up. Yeah. And so we bought the call cord place. Cool. And that's when I the, that's when I quit my job. And the rest is history. Yeah, man, that's awesome. So, um, I, I try and always 
when I'm at talking to like a, a level of builder that you are, right? So when you're so you're working a, a every day in that mm -hmm. job, right? Yep. You've got a regular job, but then you're doing this on the side. At what point do you think you were like? What point did your regular job become your side job, and you were working on transmissions so much? Probably shortly after I moved to Little Kansas. Yeah. Yep. Wow. At that point, I knew, and the the economy was kind of tanking at the time, mm -hmm. and so I was just kind of waiting on. Where Will was in trouble. I mean, gotcha. they, they survived it. You know, yeah. most, they did a good job and survived it. But I just, I waited on them and I went in one day and they said, we're having a voluntary layoff. And I went, <laughs> I'll do it. Wow. That's cool. Yep. What was the, what was that feeling like? Like scary. when you raised your hand and it yeah. was scary. Yeah. Cause at that point I knew I got to do this. Yep. It's got to work. All, all the times you got mad at something and let it sit for months now couldn't sit. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. But I mean, think about, you know, and that's what I try and e explain to people that are kind of going through that same situation. I mean, you've got, what's the square footage of this shop? Gigantic. Uh, this shop is 10,000 total. We have. I mean, that's crazy. And it's, it's full. Like there's cars oh, yeah. out front waiting, you know, yeah, and I'm sure probably... you moved some stuff around to, so we could get in today and stuff like that. And yeah. I, it, it's just awesome to me when somebody, you know, does something on the side and then increases it and now does this, you know, cause you run a great business. I mean, everybody that has had your stuff and has talked to you and you've helped them through situations. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell the story about uh, the 4L80 that you did for me. Oh yeah. Right. So yeah, that one. All right. I, I, we had had um, the, it was behind the 4.8 and we were doing a turbo setup uh, for Stanley, the old truck. And so it, it never shifted right. It never shifted consistently, never shifted right. So I call Kevin and I'm like, hey, please, or I, I message you. I'm like, hey, please help me figure this out. So he's like, what's it doing? I kind of give him some run around. He goes, I think it's your front pump. And so I was like, okay. Because when we had opened it originally, and I don't know if I told you this, when we opened it, there was no filter. You know, it somebody had been in there at one point. And so it was like, oh man, oh great. So obviously, I order like most people do. I order a Transgo HD2 shift mm -hmm. kit because we're going slappy mechanics on it and cheap, yep, right? That's the way they seem to do it. <laughs> yep. So um, I order it. I have it like in my hand. Uh, you tell me to order a front pump. I order a front pump. I, and I should have just had you order it because like... It, because I remember what, thinking I, that the pump was cross-leaking. Yep. And that was at the point that I didn't have a lathe. Yep. So my only option at that point was to tell you to buy a pump, yep. which now we have a lathe, so we fix them ourselves. Well, and what's funny is, so you had it a week, we can have something like that. I mean, it was a super short time. And uh, so I, I come to pick it up and you tell me, hey, don't worry about the Transgo, just return it. I'll do my own shift kit. I'm like, you're the man, dude, let's go. So you do that, you work your magic inside, whatever you do, we end up putting some clutches in it because um, they were worn and then, um, but you find out that the front pump, the um, gasket was in the wrong spot. Yeah, they had the gasket between the halves, which was <laughs> right. making it cross leak. <laughs> yeah. So it was it was pretty funny to, but it was really interesting that like your brain worked that quick just through diagnosis over Facebook Messenger. You know, I mean, it was some conversation back and forth in that that helped. But I mean, like, you're pretty smart when it came to that. So I pick it up, man, that thing has been bulletproof since we got it. I mean, it's been, it's done everything we've asked it to. And that's, I, I think that says, now, obviously we're not at the level of a lot of the guys you build stuff for, but, uh, you know, 500 wheel horsepower turbo setup that I beat the crap out of all the time. Been there a couple of years, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've put 2000 miles on the turbo setup. I mean, it just does exactly what it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So so that's pretty neat. So what would you say um, your, like as far as engine or training builds and stuff like that, above 600 wheel horsepower, what do you think, like of the percentage you actually put together for folks, what do you think that number is? Like percentage wise, I guess. It's well over half. God, that's awesome. Yeah, half, my, awesome. Biz half my business is race car stuff. God, see, that's and awesome. And it's to very me. rare to get an under 500 horsepower build. Wow. I mean, that says a bunch about the level of work you guys do here, obviously. We try. <laughs> yep. So um, I, I build a lot of stuff that people say can't be built. And right. It is. I was going to say, there's a ton of 60s that you've yep. put together that are running around making big power. Yep. <laughs> so we talked about having both jobs. What are the – because obviously you, you don't just do 
high horsepower transmission stuff. What are some, like what, what can this shot do for folks? We do pretty much any daily driver transmission you've got. Wow. And along with, as well as race car stuff. Yep. So if somebody's having an issue with their 2000. I don't, I don't like Hondas. <laughs> well, I was going to say. I, mean, I just really don't like building Hondas. To yep. me, they're just not worth my time. Wow. Too much, too much magic inside of them? I just don't like them. Yeah. They didn't, they they're, need to consult you on their next transmission uh, builds. <laughs> That's awesome. So, but, but, but anything else, pretty I mean, much front wheel drive, yeah, rear wheel drive. Front wheel drives. Yeah. I really, really try to push Hondas away. I don't, yeah. I just don't want to do them. Yeah. So if, if you're listening to this, bring everything, I mean, but you can Honda. bring Hondas, but like you're going to pay for it. <laughs> no, nah, I just say don't even bring it. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I don't want to do it. I'm getting <laughs> That's awesome. to where I'm, I've got enough to do. I'm going to start picking and choosing what I work on Man, and great. Hondas are not going to be one of them. Hey, I know there's a lot it, of good money in them. Because you think about it, there's a lot of other cars out there yeah. other than Hondas. <laughs> so I can work on Dodge, one Honda Ford. or I can work on three Chevrolets Golly. and make way more money doing the three Chevrolets. Yeah, and you can do it in and out, and you know it, yeah. and you've been there, and you've Yep, I, you can look around the shop. I've got inventory. Oh, I didn't think about the inventory side of that stuff, too. So yep. turnaround time on that's a big plus, too. Yep, somebody comes in with something that I keep a, a unit in stock for. Yep. Usually within two or three days, it's going back home. Wow. That's cool. So like, you know, a lot of the ele electronic transmissions as of late, I mean, eight and 10 speed stuff, you seeing much of it? I'm not seeing the eights yet. Yeah. I'm starting to see a lot of the six L's. Wow. There's one on the rack behind you. Yeah. Mm. So, um, cause when they went to like the six speed stuff, it's all like 6L80 and 6L90, right? Yep. So it's supposed to be pretty tough. I mean, Steven had a 6L80 in the G8, and it was, it they, held They up do work well. good. Yeah. Now, is it uh, like, you know, Turbo 400 and 4L80 are pretty close? I mean, is it basically that set up internally, or is it a uh, whole it's new? Totally different animal. There's one on the bench over there if you want to see the internals. Yeah. I wouldn't know what I was looking at. It's a <laughs> totally different animal. That's crazy. So what about like shift tuning and stuff? Can you help folks with I'm, that? I'm learning. Yeah. Talk about, talk about like with the with laptop. Yep. I've got the 60s and 80s and all the four speeds, you know, pretty well figured out. Yep. I have not ventured into the six L's. Yeah. I can only imagine because of the time that it would take to I've learn been, that kind of stuff. Everybody has warned me that they're very finicky. So I've yeah. just been sending all of them to Jim. Yeah. It makes sense. Jim uh, Parks. Now he was, yep. uh, Tomb by JP was on the podcast a couple weeks ago. Yep. And he, uh. I know Jim would gladly teach me. You know, he's the one that taught me to do what tuning I do know. Yeah. But he's a busy man. Uh, yeah, big time. Yeah. And you guys are about an hour and 20 minutes from each other. So, right. you know, now find the, the four hours of time it would take you to yes. <laughs> drive there and back and all that kind of stuff. So I, I've seen a couple of folks uh, or a, a guy for sure uh, in and out of the office. That's so probably how, Josh. How, how many employees do you have here? Uh, right now, it's me. I, run, I do my own job here, Josh. Works in the tire shop. It's in the middle back there. Cool. Uh, my daughter works Wednesday, Thursday, Friday as in the office. And then we have another gal that works Monday and Tuesday. That's cool, man. Yeah. So you got like, you're like yeah. supporting the whole ecosystem. And then my son ecosystem. obviously works with me. Yeah. He does some R&R &R for me. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and then, so uh, this is a big one. Give us a secret transmission builder tip. Like something that nobody knows. I don't know what people have problems with. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why it's so hard to do. I tear stuff apart that other shops have done. And I'm just like, why? Why did you do this? Right. So, you know, I don't know if it's one of those deals where they just, honestly, what I think it is, I think they're so hell bent on getting the job yeah. that they feel like they have to undercut their self. Mm. And, I went to a management success seminar. This is kind of a rabbit trail, but this, this is going to lead you to where what we're talking about right now. The guy that gave the course, he said, uh, if, you're tr if someone's transmission goes out, they're mad. Yeah? He yep. said, they're mad whether you do it for $100 or $1,000. He said, yep. it doesn't matter what you charge, they're still going to be mad. Yeah. He said, so if you do it for nothing, you're both mad. I, that's he said, the perfect if you charge example. a fair price, at least one of you leaves happy that day. Yeah. And I know that sounds selfish, but it's it's the way it is. Well, the and other, so I'm not afraid to charge what needs to be charged. Yep. 
Well, and if you have to go back into that, you're not like, oh my gosh, and it gets right. put back burner because that's what happens. Uh, I've seen a bunch at other shops is those guys didn't make any money the first time. Right. And so when you start talking about doing it the second time, now they have to find the time to be able to afford mm -hmm. to work on that car again. So, yeah. you know. And so what happens fair is, pricing and you stuff know, is, somebody bids this job stupid cheap mm -hmm. just to get it. And then they get in it and they realize that, hey, I, I can't make any money if I do it this way. If I, it needs so many parts. Yep. So they're trying to tear down cores and they're putting used parts in. Just trying just, to make it work. And just trying to make it work. Yeah. And they're putting parts in that they shouldn't have sent out the door. And it, what's funny is like the difference in that is 300 bucks. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yep. not like it's going to be $2,000 more money. Mm -hmm. Now, you on can some figure, of the high-level stuff, maybe, but, like, a regular person driving in and out, no. Like if it, that truck comes back, you can figure it costs a shop a 1000 bucks. Oh, yeah. I, I can't, I can't so imagine. So, you get one chance to charge a customer. Yep. After that, you're yep. eating it. Yep. And that don't taste good. No, no, no. So, being that you've been in business, how long have you been doing this day in, day out? Full-time, like, by myself? Mm-hmm. I want to say I quit my job in 04, 05, somewhere Dang, in that range. That's awesome. So a long time. Yeah, long yeah. time. So with having that many customers under your belt, how many messages a day do you get? <laughs> because the other side, I want people to understand, I've, like, you build stuff that are is like high horsepower, drag-only stuff. So, like, those folks, we're, they're always, brain is always ticking. So, like, how many messages? I mean, texts and phone calls and Facebook messages? I can't imagine. Probably 70. God, that's nuts. Yeah, that and that's nuts. why this summer's been so hard on me. I just got back from vacation. <laughs> I, took a, I took a week off. I told my customers I'm taking at least a week, and I might take a month. I'm, a, I'm not coming back until I'm just refreshed. <laughs> yep, where'd you go? I didn't go anywhere. I built fence at home, worked there, on my own truck. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're going to tell that story a minute on the truck <laughs> because, like, it's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's nowhere what it was when we started well you know hey potatoes Nine, 900 wheel horsepower i think at some point in your yeah, past I made seven god that's awesome and that's it, a bunch and then it pushed water and i just missed my truck yeah it, it hadn't been reliable since day one and so all the turbo stuff came back off got sold and we went back to a cam only deal <laughs> there you go there you go there's always time for that later yeah you know? and to be able to drive it you know because like yeah. I, it had been at other uh, I think I saw it at uh, Chris's place for a little bit yep. uh, on the podcast up there. And so, you know, as busy as you are, it's hard a lot of times to work on your own stuff. It is. So uh, let's see. So we talked about uh, the secret trans tip Tip is uh, do it right the first time. Yeah, just do it right. <laughs> and then uh, w so we talked about your personal truck. Any mm -hmm. other project, personal car projects you got? A bunch of them. They're yeah. all projects. <laughs> Anything Every, that's... Uh, everything I own needs worked on. Well, but I mean like project car projects. You know what I mean? Like fun stuff. Uh, my son bought Alex Smith's old truck. Uh, I don't know if I know it. What is the that? The red, little red short wide, just like mine. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay, yep. yep. It, it, uh, it's one another one that I did the tranny in, and for some reason it broke an input shaft, and Dang. Alex had just been fed up with the truck. He'd fought it for a couple years, Yep. and he popped off that he wanted to sell it, and I bought it. There you go. <laughs> yep. And so, so we need to do some fine tuning on it. Yep. But it's a nice little pickup. That's cool. And just just gonna be a cruiser. Yep. You guys gonna run around and uh, do car shows goal, and cruise Well, nights? my son actually bought that truck. Yep. He paid cash for it. That's cool. He worked for me all summer and <laughs> saved his money up, and he bought it, and I'm really proud of him. Yeah. That's Teaching cool. him, you no, know, don't go in debt. You don't need to save yep. your money. You know, buy what you want and enjoy it. Yep. If if you'll make a car payment to yourself, you won't have to. You won't have and to. So my, make our goal next year is me and my son are going to do the Rocky Mountain Race Week yeah. in both of our trucks. Yes. Well, uh, as of right now, so I have to take the wife on a family vacation before 1.0 for me to be able to go on 1.0. So that's the plan. I, I really want to do the Rocky Mountain stuff. I want to get over that way and see the sights because we did 2.0 and it was so much fun. Have you been on one of those yet? No, I oh. was actually set to go and my truck popped a head gasket. Yeah. So I had to cancel. Yep. There's a, man, there's a bunch of folks that have had that same situation and waited years, yeah. you know, before they get to go. It's so worth it. It was so much fun. And especially like if you're going, 
you and your son, I mean, obviously there's going to be a big group of us that are going to, I mean, just fall into the convoy and the troll. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. That's what's so neat about that trip. It's going to be a blast. You know, he's uh, he'll turn 16 this month. Wow. That's cool. And so it, it was kind of scary, you know. I mean, that little red truck makes 400 to the tire. <laughs> and it, it's kind of scary turning a 16-year-old boy loose in a pickup that runs that good. But, yeah. you know, I think back and, like, my dad did it. You know, he yeah. turned me loose in the truck that would just annihilate his tires. <laughs> And I'm alive. Yep, you live. Yeah. And the other side of that too is like, there's only one way to figure it out. Yeah. You know, you're gonna have to put your foot too far in at one time. I, my daughter is 22. Oh my gosh, now you make me look bad. I don't know how old my daughter is. <laughs> but uh, took her out in the snow, and I said, "Make it slide." There you go. And we drove that expedition all around the field, <laughs> and I said, "Make it slide." Yep. You need to learn how to correct this thing. Yep. And she's, she did it. Yeah. You know, she, so if she's you gotta made it learn how to. That's control cool. the chaos yes exactly right so let's talk um let's talk goals for a minute uh -huh. let's talk about when a client is looking at you to do their stuff what is what is one or two things that they need to have in mind when before they call you or before they send a message to the page or whatever uh, i just mainly it's just word, word of mouth it just tells people yeah. you know take it to this guy it's probably not going to have problems, but if it does, it's going to get taken care of. Well, I'm talking about goals on their end, like as far as like, because uh, torque converters are another bit of magic, yeah. you know. So um, when I called, because we put a TCI converter in the old truck because of my buddy at Aaron, my buddy Aaron that uh -huh. works at Comp, right? So when I called him, I mean, I had like, you know, tire size, gear ratio, yep. engine setup, cam specs, all that kind of stuff. Um, when they come to you, I mean, do they need to have, especially like high horsepower stuff? I mean, do they need to have all that? Most of them do. Yep. And, you know, that that kind of leads you off another little rabbit trail. The biggest thing is that they've got to be honest with me. You know, if mm. you tell me you want a stock 400 mm -hmm. and I build you a stock 400 and then it's not in a stock application, it's going to fail. Yeah. And I see people all over talk about, oh, it's race stuff, there's no warranty. Yeah. I feel like that's wrong. Right. And I've spent years getting my customers to trust me with their numbers, and that's why I don't share them. Yep. I mean, I know exactly how much power Chris Harper's car makes, <laughs> but yep. I'm not telling anybody because yep. that's not my business. Yep. But in him being honest with me and telling me the power that it makes, it's my job to make it live. Well, and a lot of times, you know, they, they do that because they're like, oh, man, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on race they parts. Do. But what is the difference in cost-wise – for like a stock 400 rebuild that's going behind something that makes 400 and like parts that are going to be in something that's going to make more than a thousand you a couple hundred bucks I, I sell a stock turbo 400 for 700 dollars right um i can tell you i keep i keep a cookie cutter 400 which is a guaranteed thousand horsepower trans brake unit i keep one in stock at all times and that one usually depending on which valve body i have to run Mm -hmm. is about $2,300. I mean, so, you know, that's that's yep. a pretty big difference. But if somebody's calling trying to be cheap on a $700 or a $700 400 setup, it's going to break. It's going to break. And then you're going to spend more money and you're yep. going to spend it again and you're going to be pissed yep. and you're going to go, oh, man, this didn't work. You know, so going in, putting back a little bit more money would definitely help because a lot of that comes down to converter cost too you know converters are expensive yep especially you know the 400 stuff is is less expensive than like the 80 and the mm -hmm. 6l stuff yep. but like you better get it right the first mm -hmm. time because if, if you wipe a converter trans, trans gets gone through yep yeah it's no fun at all for any of that stuff yeah so um you've driven all kinds of stuff i do i get to drive customers car <laughs> all the time i love it what uh what power level do you feel is like a fun street car that you would cruise nights and things like that the five and six hundred range is fun yep you start getting over that and it's not even fun you it's know just... when my truck made 700 i couldn't do anything in it it just mm -hmm. it would kill the tires that's a good point yeah yeah you and... get over you get around six seven hundred horsepower and they're just not even fun you that's can't do anything great. with them i drove uh Oh gosh, I can't remember which Chris it was, but it was a little the newer Camaro, mm -hmm. and that car was a monster to drive. <laughs> you know, That's it, wild. Would I? 
what I really like is the level of trust that my customers have with me. Yep. You know, they drop off these thousand horsepower cars <laughs> and just, you know, throw me the keys. Here you go. Yeah. When yep. I did Corey Heinemann's car, just turn this thing down as far as you can turn it down. You know, I don't <laughs> want to drive this thing. I know it makes 1200 Golly. and he turned it way down and he said, this thing's still going to make 650 or so. <laughs> You're like, perfect. That yep. lets me ease it around and do yes. some pro yeah i can go out and i can shifts. drive it and it's controllable for me i'm not used to the car so i don't need yeah. to be everything it's got don't don't need to remember that oh when you first hit the brake pedal yeah. you got to hit it a little hard you know all that kind yeah. of stuff and then goes when the customer with. gets here obviously we i tell them to turn it up to the point that they can drive it on the street wow. and we go for a ride and confirm that everything's good god that's awesome and sometimes they just don't they just don't hook sometimes they spin yep. and you just got to get your feedback later <laughs> yep at the track or something like yep. that so uh doing this day in day out for more than 15 years how much has building changed uh in that time frame i mean like it's crazy the amount um, of like yeah electronic solenoids inside yes. of one that control stuff yeah the, the learning how the electronics work and what 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 drives them yeah. You know, there's a lot of vehicles that come in with transmission problems that aren't transmission problems. That's nuts. And you got to learn to distinguish it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we put shift solenoids in the old truck first, thinking that it was that. And it ended up being, I mean, the front pump wasn't but 150 bucks or something. It was crazy yeah. cheap. But we put, I think we spent 150 or $200 on solenoids, buying different ones and trading, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, and it's getting harder, just harder to identify. Oh, yeah, I can't imagine. That's why you but do that stuff. We all, now. We all so, learn. Yeah, right. So what's the future hold for uh, Hensley's transmission? And, uh, yeah. I'm at a, I'm kind of at a weird level in my business yep. to where I've grown all I can grow by myself. Yep. But I've, I've not reached a level where I need to be yep. to, in order to employ other people. Gotcha. And I've been struggling with this. I'm on this hump that I've been for several years. Yep. And I just, this summer wore me out. Yep. Yeah, you needed a break. I needed a break. <laughs> I did. So do you think a, a full-time person is in your future? Yeah, I'm actually thinking of hiring a builder right now. That's cool. Yep, Man, I can't I'm imagine just, what you'll turn out then. It'll be the, nuts in here. The hard part is hiring somebody and giving them my secrets. Yep. And then the, and keeping them yep. here, you know. And that's, that's probably what every... But I'm to the point now where I, I need to run my business. Yeah. I need to be the one that looks at things and yep. and deals with the customers. Yep. I'll never give up the race car stuff. That's always going to be me. But <laughs> yep. I, I've re I'm really on the verge of hiring somebody to do the daily driver stuff. That'd be cool because then that yeah. would allow you more time. Because then, you know, I always think like if you can focus your attention, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, all this knowledge you have in your brain, right? If you can focus that on race car stuff, like how much, you know, how much more level could you get with that? Because now you're not focused on a 6L80 in a 2013 right. Chevrolet truck, you know, yeah. and how to keep, and keeping that knowledge in there. Yeah. Or if you wanted to learn 6L stuff or 8L or 10 speed stuff, you could do that because you have an advanced, you have a wider right. range of, of. Most of my friends, brain. my personal friends know that I bought an enclosed trailer this year. Oh, yeah. Yep. That was a little different deal. And I haven't told many people what the plan was with that. But my goal, my plan with that is to do mobile repair to track. Oh man! Yeah, and that's what all that inventory over there is for. You'd be a hero. Yep. I'm not talking the go to the Friday night drags and fix the stuff yeah, there. You're talking I'm about, talking about going to the three day events. Yeah, Rocky Mountain Race Week stuff. Yep. Yeah. So it's crazy because like we saw, I don't know. One guy had his uh, torque flight over torque flight. Yeah. Uh, over a trash can rebuilding yeah. it. I mean, like there was, there were people always looking for turbo 400 stuff. Yep. I mean, all that. So I think that is a genius idea. Yeah. Cause you so would, I, plus you get to go to the events. Yeah. <laughs> even know if, you don't, even if all you do is make enough money to pay for your trip, <laughs> you, you know, still got to go. It's a blast. Yep. I That's mean, awesome. I've learned that in this business, I'm never going to retire. Yep. Cause you just can't put enough money back to retire. Yep. So the business is my retirement. Yeah. I need yep. to get to the point where I've got guys working here. And I show up on Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and I <laughs> overlook the shop and make sure everything's going. Yep. And then you just, you're on the phone for Thursday, Friday. 
Yeah, I don't, we I don't even want to be on the phone. I've been redirecting everything to the office. <laughs> well, but I mean, like, if they had a question or yes. something like that, you know, you, you wouldn't have to be standing there over their shoulder. And that right. takes time to build that team and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So that's really cool. Well, we've got some videoing to do. we got some pictures to take. So let's get down to the final four questions I got right. uh, to ask everybody. So what is the fastest you've driven or, like, ridden motorcycle or whatever that you've actually been in the seat of? I've been... 160s on a bike. Yeah. Yep. Telephone poles look like a picket fence. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, I believe I went 150 or 170 in a little black Corvette. Um, I've been 140 in my orange truck numerous times. Whew, that's fast in the that's, truck. That's moving. Because it's, it's four-wheel drive, no, right? It's two-wheel drive. And the truck oh, okay. drives really good. Yeah. It'd have to, to be 140 in it. <laughs> yeah. It, it wasn't scary at all. That's awesome. So, uh... If you're taking apart something old, are you a WD-40 or PB Blaster kind of guy? I'm a WD-40 guy. I've used all of them, yep. and I can't say that any of them are any better than anything else. <laughs> I think it's more along the lines of when you put it back together, put anti-seize on the exhaust bolts. What? Listen, don't bring your oh, yeah. logic in here. <laughs> oh. I can't. You no, know, this truck behind you come from another shop, mm -hmm. and it been apart, has never been down the road because the tranny does not work. Wow. And I ruined three exhaust studs, pulling yep. the nuts off. It's simple. Put they put anti seize back on them. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Um, are you a gloves or bare hands kind of kind of guy? Bare hands. Bare hands kind of guy. I do the gloves. Yep. And then this is a good one. Unlimited budget. You're not even having to pay for it. What's your dream car? I don't even have a dream car. <laughs> All of care. them. I yeah. <laughs> Nothing is. I, none of them. That's awesome. I don't have anything that you I just, I've always wanted. Yeah, build what you want when you want it. That's I cool. go through a lot of vehicles. My wife actually was just, we was talking last night because I just bought another truck. It's sitting right there. <laughs> and she said, you know, you buy a lot of vehicles. Yeah, yeah. I do. <laughs> she said, I think you just like buy them. Hey, I'm a buyer. <laughs> That's what it is. I don't make money on them. Do shopping. I like no, buying them. I'm not buying to resell. Yep. But I think we have seven or eight vehicles in our driveway. Oh, my gosh. I like it. Yeah, and just style. brought another one home last night. That's funny. All right. Well, that's it for me on this one. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know you're a busy guy. And, you, like, the shop is clean for us. So that helps a bunch with the video and stuff that folks will be watching over. I think over. it's a disaster right now. But ah, no, it looks, it looks it really good. And I know how busy you are. And taking an hour out of your day is hard. So, so I definitely appreciate you taking the time to do this for us. And I, I'd love to have you back. I'd love to get... Uh, a little deeper, nittier, grittier with some stuff and maybe see if we can coax some of those uh, maybe higher end secrets out of you. I know you got a bunch of that stuff that's hidden down in there. We don't want to tell that mm -hmm. stuff, but but I definitely like to, to pick your brain some. I know there's a lot of people I don't out think there I, there's any secrets in, I don't think I have any secrets. I think I just have a a moral code. Yeah. You know, that I'm just not sending something out that's not right. That's awesome. And I think all the transmission builders see it, and I think the only difference between me and them is what we allow to leave. Yep. I mean, I mean that's that's a great way. That's a that's a great way to say it. All right, I'm gonna end it there. All right. Thanks, dude.